All right, I'm gonna make a quick video of this uh, 20 ohm water-cooled resistor thing I've been working on in case it doesn't work. I'm gonna pass water over it. It's in a copper jacket. And uh, I'm gonna power it up to about 2800 watts and see if it melts or not. So I have 10 2 ohm resistors, 100 watt capacitor resistors in series in a chain inside a copper pipe um, that's soldered and then uh, that pipe has wires that come out of it which go through a water barrier and the whole the chassis is completely isolated from the circuit so I'm going to start at like 200 watts for 10 minutes and then I'll go to like um, 120 volts which is something like 750 watts for 10 minutes and you should be able to feel the water actually getting warmer the flow rate's about 75 milliliters a second and then uh, for the big show, we're gonna go to 240 volts, 12 amps, 3,800 watts, almost 3,000 watts. So 3,000 watt water-cooled resistor, yippee! Very safe test set up here. So here it is. I jankedly attached it to my shower, but inside this copper jacket, the water is flowing in. I actually made this little duct tape seal thing and it's not leaking, which is amazing. And then you, the wire goes through here. This is hot glue, but I'll make this water later on. I mean, um, epoxy. And then down here, you have the same thing. And then inside the barrel, you have all the resistors lined up. So, pumping water through, and we will uh, put power on. 600 volt MOSFETs are 450. So this is about 245 watts. 71 volts AC RMS. A little old variac here, a little bathtub test setup, and water. So I'll just run for a minute and see if anything breaks. You can always find the power in any electrical system or lost over a component by taking the current and the voltage and multiplying it together. Or taking the current and squaring it and multiplying it by the resistance. 3.5 squared times 20 equals 100, 242, 245, or V squared, taking the voltage squared, and dividing it by the resistance. So 71.7 times 71.7 .7 divided by 20 also equals 245, probably. One of these might be more accurate than the other, so probably that one. <laughs> All right, my old sad variac is uh, making bad smells. So we're gonna go straight to 120. It ran for like five minutes. There's a small voltage drop, but 117, that should be about 5, 6 amps, so I think that's 750 watts. Well, that's 20 minutes at 6, 700 watts. Let's, uh, let's go up to, uh, 2800 watts. <laughs> oh my god. I definitely thought it'd break by now, and I'd get to take it apart and see what went wrong. Alright, it's been some time, but that's two, almost 240, 235. I am scared to touch it. <laughs> we'll see if it, how long it lasts, if it breaks, we'll see what went wrong. That's 11 amps at 235 volts. It's 25, 2800 watts, about. Not bad. Ooh, it's definitely warmer. So the amount that the water is getting heated by this is about 13 degrees Fahrenheit, 7 degrees Celsius, I think. Uh, the flow rate is 80 milliliters per second the power is 2600 watts so 26 over 80 is like 32 watts per milliliter per second um to raise a, a milliliter of water one degree it's something like 4.2 joules so 32 joules uh, goes into four like seven times so seven degrees celsius uh per milliliter will be increased and that turns into like 13 degrees f which is actually not bad. Uh, hope that made sense. I'm kind of tired. Water is just super energy dense. So, you know, you think 2600 watts, you'd, you'd be cooking all the water, but not with that flow rate. Although if you uh, if you stop flowing the water, you'll find that the the volume of water will actually boil in about one minute uh, ish. So, yeah, you need. I'm gonna. I have a circuit I designed with a few temperature fail safes and an AND gate to protect this system. Let me show it to you. So I thought of this circuit the other day, I was just kind of bored. And uh, 
I wanted to make this fancy. So here's our 20 ohm load out here. And uh, I want to use MOSFETs back to back with an isolated gate driver to basically flip them on and off and not a relay. And I want to have this AND gate that kind of takes these three inputs and if all three of these are uh, working, um, then we're allowed to turn that, uh, to drive the MOSFETs on and off. I should start at the beginning. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, here's our two, uh, what is that? Yeah, there's, there's our wall power. Anyways, so that comes in. Uh, we rectify that. Well, first I have an isolation transformer I bought. We rectify that. We regulate it down to about 5 volts, so everything past here is 5 volts. And then this is a temp sensor, so this is just a temp sensor and comparator. So if the temp sensor goes past 100 degrees Fahrenheit, it trips this, and that goes to one of these uh, BJTs. And there's another one, so I'll have two for redundancy. And basically, so these are the two temp sensors that get tripped if they're high, and they're inverted, so if, they, if the temperature goes too high, they, they shut off. And if these two shut off, it shuts down this, uh, pulling the relay down, energizing the relay. If the relay closes, then it will short the uh, gates from positive, like they are n when you're running the system, um, to negative down here. Um, also, this is the input for the user. So this is optocoupled. Uh, this is the third input. So if the user wants to turn it on and the two temperature sensors are in agreement, all three of these are true, all of these MOSFETs turn on, pulls the relay down, it says, hey, let's turn on the MOSFETs, but, because I just, I wanted more, I put a zero crossing detector in here that <laughs> only lets the MOSFET gates drain uh, when the zero, the zero crossing is taking place. So there's a sine wave here, and you know, you could probably switch, these are like 600 volt MOSFETs or 450, um, and the peak voltage is like 330 RMS times root two, so, you know, you could probably switch it to at 330, but why would you do that? So this circuit right here, every time that there's a zero crossing, this uh, turns off this uh, connection right here. And if this is off, uh, then this voltage rises up to the rail voltage, which is 5, and forces current through the base of this BJT, and the base of this BJT connects the MOSFET gates, which were once connected to the positive f rail, to the negative rail. And this is 5 volts. You can't drive MOSFETs with 5 volts. So that's actually fine. We can just run another 12 or 15 volt rail in. So yeah, what could go wrong? I mean, who loves just, just design the circuit and we'll see what happens. <laughs> Let's see how many uh, new technologies are here that I've never used before. Um, I've made one back-to-back -back MOSFET driver, didn't understand how it worked, never made an optocoupler, uh, never made a zero-crossing optocoupler detector, never made an AND gate, uh, never optocoupled an ON switch. Uh, I've made a comparator when I was in school. They're a pain in the ass. And a rectifier. I've made many rectifiers. So yeah. Let's see if the circuit's blown up yet. Still got 11 amps, so that's about 2600 watts. Woo! Still going. And I connected the chassis to ground, so it's a little less deadly. This is a light box I made a, like a year ago. Probably dangerous. <laughs> Cutie butt. All right, this was a huge success. Did not think that was gonna work. I mean, I could stop this, and it will, like right now it will break, but yeah. Now I just need to build the schematic. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? Cool. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Take it easy. I'm going to sleep.